unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. That you love me. I'm amazed that you care. Precious blood, I found perfect. Now my sins are worth. Oh, my sins are worth. Away. Tonight, you're leaving one level, you're going to another level. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not encouraging you in the Lord. I'm not strengthening you. No. I'm, I'm telling you what I know. Tonight, something is happening in your life. John 19, verse 30. Are we there? One, two, let's go. It says... <clears throat> When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he what? He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Read it again. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Hallelujah. What was finished? Hallelujah. What was finished? Praise the Lord. Many people think they understand why Jesus came, but many people don't understand why Jesus came. Hallelujah. If you ask many Christians, why did Jesus come? Many of them will give you what they think brought Jesus, or what they assume Jesus came for. And some would give you answers which are true. Are you hearing me? But are only part of his mandate. Hallelujah. He said, Jesus came to save the lost. That's true. 
that it's just part of his mandate. There were men who are in heaven, yet Jesus had not yet existed in the flesh. You understand? Jesus came to wash away our sins. Yes, there are men who did not sin. You understand? Or who walked this life. You understand? Blameless. Babies. You understand? They didn't do sin in the similitude, okay, in the similitude of the natural way of doing sin. Except, of course, they would carry the sin of, of Adam. But that's it. Praise the Lord. So, if somebody asks, why did Jesus come? The people ask themselves, why did Jesus come? Of course, they say Jesus came to, to make us happy. It's true. Jesus came to give us good gifts. Yes, it is true. Jesus came to do all these kinds of things. And all of that is true. But what is the truth from his lips? He says, the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. Hallelujah. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he says, and I am come that you might what? You might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Now, one time, if I have an opportunity, I'll explain the killing, stealing, killing, and destruction. I want to submit to you the devil cannot destroy who he has not killed, and he can't kill who he has not stolen. That's the pattern of the spirit. He first steals, then kills, then destroys. Even if it seems like a man is being destroyed, if he has not yet been stolen... He can't be killed. So, one day if I get the opportunity, I'll explain exactly how Christians are stolen. You understand? The versions of Christianity in their understanding of stolen is too painful for any man to even understand. If some of our eyes were open to really understand what the devil steals. You understand? We used to sing songs like, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me and I do you remember this mobile phone and I and this old sound solo uh, and I went to the enemy's car remember this old car and he took my wife's. listen the devil didn't steal cars in hell there is no parking <laughs> quite honestly there are no waves for a devil to keep a Panasonic hallelujah he doesn't need a mobile phone for what to send whatsapp to who you think demons have a WhatsApp group where they just... <laughs> Do you understand where I'm coming from? Hallelujah. What is my point? My point is simple. That whether you want it or believe it in your heart or not, I will want to tell you, many definitions of what people call stealing are not actually stealing. The devil is not stupid. The Bible calls him crafty. Are you hearing me? He cannot just waste his time to say, the devil has stolen my phone. But really, the devil didn't steal mobile phones. Come on, please. Please. Now he takes it where? Do you understand? He uses it for what? Do you understand where I'm coming from? So one time I'll explain the killing. So Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and life to the fullest. Are you hearing me? Give me the uh, amplified of that. Uh-huh. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, I came that they may have and enjoy. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. He said, I'm come that they may have and enjoy life. And have it in abundance to the full. Till it overflows. That's how God came. You understand? That's why he came. That you might have life and enjoy it. You just enjoy it. You wake up in the morning and you're full of life. You're blessed, you're rich, you understand? On every side, you're feeling okay in your body. Are you hearing me? Nothing is missing. Some Christians just want to attract destruction. Every time they wake up in the morning and say, what is the devil doing? That's why I tell Christians. You know, some, I wish you know. Somebody wakes up at midnight, the devil, 3 a.m., Hour, you understand? 3 a.m. Me, I'm sleepy. Are you hearing me? Because the Bible says he's given sleep to them which he loves. The moment God falls in love with you, he gives you sleep. Are you hearing me? 
God does not set special hours of, of prayer, midnight. No. He said, praying always in the Holy Ghost. Always. Means I can wake up at 4, I can pray at midday. Are you hearing me? Don't judge me for not praying at 3 a.m. if I prayed at 6 a.m. I say, ah, but the midnight hour, according to which clock? Because USA is in another time zone. Malaysia is in another time zone. Dubai is in another time zone. Rwanda is in another time zone. Which midnight hour? Tell your neighbor he's the God of time. And time belongs to him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I saw one time I was telling somebody, oh, somebody was saying, oh, the Sabbath, you know, okay. Let's first calculate from the beginning. Which calendar? Let's go from the beginning of the years, right? Which calendar? How did they calculate the, the six days? And you'll understand one day. What I'm trying to tell you here is, God came that you might have life. And life to the fullest. Praise the Lord. Message. What does the message say? Uh-huh. Read. Uh-huh. A thief is only there to what? To steal. And do what? And what? So he said, I came so that they can have real and eternal life. More and better life than they ever dreamed of. If you have dreamt now you're, in a, you, 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 you're shaking hands with the president, God is saying he wants to give you more life than you've ever dreamed. Imagine how happy Christians would be if they understood only that scripture. John 10.10. 10. Imagine how we'd wake up every morning. Are you hearing me? You'd wake up because you're saying, now God, how are you going to surprise me today? Are you going to tickle me? Are you going to give me a Mercedes? What are you going to do? Tell me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why the Lord Jesus came. That you might have life. Now, his mandate was to work out the plan and process to make sure that that is possible. When he did that, he said, it is finished. Meaning, you're not believing God to have a good life. No. Everything that pertains to life and godliness has been fixed. Do you know the meaning of that? It means I'm not believing God for financial breakthrough. It is done. I'm not believing God for marriage. Wapi, it is done. I'm not believing God to have children. Are you hearing me? It is already done. He's saying, it is finished. What is finished? Very simple. The having of life abundantly to the fullness till it overflows. To have a life that you've never dreamed of. Now you're saying, okay, me, I never dreamed of this. That's where God wants to begin. If, if you have ever dreamed it, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that you've never dreamed. That's the life Jesus has promised us. How can we die no more men? How can we die no more men? When you look around, what does this tell you? We're different. We're just different. Are you hearing me? We are d- we, I can't die no more. Anyway, so... When the scriptures say that it is finished, many Christians really didn't understand what was finished. And therefore, for me, my sadness is this, that many Christians walk in the unfinished work. But they live as though they are walking in the finished work of Christ. But everything taught, everything interpreted, is as though they are living in the unfinished work of Christ. And that is why you must walk out of a certain thing today if you're in it. Are you hearing me? And I'm going to qualify that by scripture. Praise the Lord. In Genesis 15, let's begin from there. Abraham, God appears to Abraham. You understand? And after this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham, and thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Okay, next verse. And Abraham said unto the Lord, "Uh What will thou give me, seeing I go childless, comma, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. Listen, he asked him, what, go back, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? Listen to the language. Meaning, you have to first give me something for me to have a child. Are you with me? He said, what will you what? 
Give me, seeing I what? Go childless. What will you give me? Seeing that I go childless. Uh-huh. And he says, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. Listen. And Abraham said, second statement, behold to me, thou hast given no seed. You see that? And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Are you hearing me? I have nothing. Seeing I go childless. I don't have a seed. I don't have a seed. I don't have a seed. Now I'm childless. Are you getting it? I'm childless because I don't have a seed. Not because I'm barren, but because I don't have a seed. Are you hearing me? I don't have a job. Not because I cannot get one, but because I don't have a seed. Give me a seed, I'll get a child. You don't understand what I'm saying. What will you give me seeing I am not married? For I don't have a seed. Abraham just needed a seed. If he had a seed, he did not have to worry about a child. If he had a seed, he would not have to worry about a, 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 a car. If he had a seed, he did not have to worry about anything. All he needed was simple. How, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless. And the next verse says, For I have not a seed. You've given me no seed. What will you give me? You've not given me a seed. Are you seeing the language? I go childless. Give me a seed. Come on, understand the language. I go childless. You give me a seed. What will you give me seeing I go childless? If I don't have a seed, Elias, I will take over. So you give me a seed. If you give me a seed. Just give me a seed. I don't know that you understand. Do you think the language of God did not understand that child and seed can appear like they're the same things, but because he wants to reveal something to you and I, he differentiated and said there is Jacob and Israel. They seed and child. They are like the same, but they are not the same. Are you with me? They are like the same. The children of Israel are not Israel. But they are children of Israel. But they are not Israel. Are you with me? Israel is the blesser of his children. They are not blessed with him only. He is the blesser of his children. Same thing. Seed and child look like they are the same. But they are not the same. And I will explain that. Now, listen to a man's problem. He has no child. And then he realizes his problem is simple. He doesn't have a seed. That's his problem. So, his problem is not... A child. His problem is a seed. Christian's problem is a child. And then somebody comes and says, Apostle, pray for me. I am barren. Your problem is not barrenness. Apostle, pray for me. I don't have a job. Pray for me. My marriage is failing. Apostle, pray for me. My sister is this. Pray for me. My cousin brother is that. Pray for me. My auntie is this. Pray for me. My uncle is this. And, and, what you think is your problem is not actually your problem. Your father Abraham knew that the problem is not having a child. The problem is not that somebody is giving you rent. The problem is not that you don't have any food on your table. That is not your problem. You just don't have seed. Are you with me? So he says, what should I do seeing that I go childless? And I'm without seed. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Now, let me explain something here. In, when you go to the 16th verse, you realize, chapter, same issue, Sarah, same issue. Going to Hagar. Seeing I go barren. Are you hearing me? So pastor said, okay. God had already promised Abraham, you remember? In the scriptures? Huh? Okay, let's first go back to the 15, where he, he speaks of Eliezer. Hey, hey, hey. Uh-huh. And, Abraham, uh-huh. and Abraham said, Lord, what will thou give me seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to, me give, to, to, to thou me has given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. 
and, okay, and, next verse. Uh huh. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be your own heir. Are you seeing that? So God promised him. After that promise, Sarah brings a suggestion. Going to what? How God? And then what happens? What happens? Ishmael comes into the being, right? And in the last verses, the Bible says that at the age of 86, Ishmael what? Was begotten. Are you this? Is that it? She's seen, I think, the last verses. Huh? He speaks of the time where Ishmael is what? He's born. At the age of? Uh-huh. Begin from 15. He says, And Hagar bare Abraham a what? A son. And Abraham called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. And Abraham was four score and six years. That is 86. When Hagar bore Ishmael, what? So at 86, he had what? He had Ishmael. But having Ishmael was because he did not understand the seed. <laughs> because the seed said that the guy who will come to you shall come out of your what? Your loins. And he thinks, okay, anything that comes out of my loins is my child. Are you hearing me? And that is the heir. So he does a human effort to fulfill the promise. Right there was the promise given. You understand? And the first line of production, which is Ishmael, was the first version of the promise of God. Are you with me? But later on, God, true to his word, in 17, he comes back when Abraham is 99 years old. Is that true? And then he tells him that what? The next year your wife is going to have a child. That was not the one I was talking about. You understand? And Isaac was what? Was begotten. Now, in Hebrews 11:11, 11, 11, I want you to open the KJV. I want you to see something very important here. The Bible says, through faith, read. Also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and delivered her a child when she was first age. Are you seeing the mind of God? That means that with God, conception is seed. Child will be delivered. Paul refused to touch those two. He brought them as they were. And he said, through faith, Sarah also herself received dunamis. That is the anointing. To conceive seed. When she conceived seed, the Bible says she was delivered of a child when she was past age. Are you seeing where I'm going? Are you seeing where I'm going? So it means, without seed, Sarah could not deliver a child. Seed was the primary place of conception. Hey, look at 11. The Bible says that the parable is that the seed is the word of God. Now let's explain this. Let's go back to Hebrews 11, 11. If the seed is the word, are you hearing me? <laughs> and the Bible says, men conceive seed and it delivers child. Men conceive seed and then they get house. Men conceive seed and then they get job. Men conceive seed and then they get... <laughs> men get con. The moment you conceive seed, you get married. The moment you conceive seed, ministry comes up. The moment you conceive seed, healing takes place. Do you realize? You conceive. So, ultimately, the issue here is, how fast can you conceive? What? The moment conception between you and the word takes place, you'll deliver anything. Come on. You'll deliver anything. The moment the word of God comes to you, I said you'll deliver anything. I told people there was a woman, one time I told this story. She was six months pregnant. She was from the x-ray. And the x-ray showed six months pregnant. She was almost dying. She had a disease no doctor could diagnose. Prayed for her and she came back to normal. Immediately. And while I was praying for her, sin came. 
I asked her, so have you gone to the scans? Yeah. I was actually went to the, in the sixth month they checked. So which child was that? There was a child there. She was a girl. I said, yeah, so was the machines very clear? Yes. I said, the Lord told me that you had a miscarriage. She said, yeah. And God told me, seed, seed came to my spirit and said, I am not the Lord who allows a woman to become pregnant. And she doesn't bring force. That is not me. So I said, God, what can be done? He told me with me everything is possible. See it. Then I told her, hold your tummy. I said, in the name of Jesus, we don't want you to become pregnant and produce uh, Simanya again the next nine months. No. I command that one which was robbed of the devil to come back in that belly. Apostle? Yes. With God, all things are possible. I concede it. So I told her, go back. She went back and they found two. Two! She produced them. She called one Grace. <laughs> Said, the second one, which shall come out? I shall call it Grace. As it grows up, I'll tell her, you, you are produced, you, you are, you are created. <laughs> the man was called Apostle Grace. Come on, conceive seed. Tell your neighbor, conceive seed. Conceive seed. did he say? He said you're the head and not the tail. Conceive seed. He said that you're above and not beneath. Conceive seed. He said you're blessed going in. You're blessed. Come on. Conceive it. Strangers shall serve you. Conceive seed. Just conceive it. Don't waste time with it. Don't play along with it. No. Everything you need has already been fixed. Do you know the meaning of that? Me, when the God comes, eh, I just take it. I don't ask for version. I don't care for story. I don't care who has understood it. Me, I used to slay myself long ago. Because I would preach and people don't understand. I say, Apostle, we Because it's not your baby. It's my baby. Are you hearing me? It's my womb. It's my body. It's my system. Force yourself to get it. Why? Because the Bible says it is impossible for God to lie. When they tell you have faith, don't you realize it's the evidence of things not seen? And it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He said simply, you get it. But then I realized the problem. Their challenge is conception. The Bible says, Ephraim, he is an unwise child. For he tarries longer where people give birth. Come on, men don't produce. He was talking about something. Hosea 13, right? Verses 12. Let's read. Uh huh. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hid. Why? The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon. Imagine a man. They're not talking about a woman here. So you better understand they're not talking about physical babies. And he says that the Sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. He shouldn't delay. Some people think you have to, you have to work harder, you have to work harder. Some of us, you know those old men when they're speaking, some of us, we worked harder. You understand? It's not bad to work hard. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? It's a good idea to work hard, and I advise everyone to work hard, because if you don't work, uh, work hard, how are we going to change this world? You understand? But my point is, there's a place where you can't work. My point is, things don't have to come after 20 years. Oh! God quicken you! But then you realize the problem with a friend. Simple. The Bible says he is a bread half-baked or burnt on one side. That's what the scriptures call him. 
There's a wisdom he doesn't have. You understand? Ephraim. The Bible says he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cat not stand. It was burnt on one side and they didn't turn it. They only know one version of the truth. They don't know the other version. They even fear going there. Because it doesn't, they don't de- they deserve. Some Christians have even gone to a point where they don't deserve to drive a nice car. They don't deserve to have a nice house. They don't deserve to have nice children and a good ministry. They don't feel like they deserve it anymore. They deserve to eat. You understand? The other day I was hearing a Christian, he was saying, you know me, even if I eat, I don't eat well. And then I, I, as long as I'm going to heaven, mama, 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 come on. That, that you're not turned. <laughs> if you are turned, you'd understand that this man came that you might have life and life to the fullest. He came that you might have life. The message version says that, that you've never dreamed of. What you've never dreamed of is what brought him. He came to give you a certain life. Where are Christians the ones who are disadvantaged? The ones who are failing? Marriage is failing Christians. You understand? Everything is on Christian people. Born again. I refuse. Tell your neighbor, those ones they are talking about didn't come. Tell them. Tell the other neighbor also. Those ones they are talking about, they didn't come. That is how I know people are in trouble with you. Because something is brewing in our nation. And every day it is telling us, with God, all things are. And we are going to be deep. And we are going to raise dead men. And the lame are walking. The blind are seeing. And we'll have money. Successful families. Our children shall be for signs and wonders. They shall be for portents ready to take place in Israel. And we shall go to heaven. And you'll find a heavier crown. Me, that's my story. You choose yours. Listen, you can't be in this heat. You're not. You can't be, you can't be in this heat for nothing. Haven't you noticed how pregnant women be? Come on, somebody, first it do it. You can't understand until you get where I am. If you get there, you just find yourself doing like this. That's when I realized Pastor Nixon. <laughs> the men of this world who are not born again and never forget this. They conceive what they produce. The men of the spirit conceive What delivers them? You got it. They conceive what delivers them. Do you realize that Sarah's conception conception of the seed delivered her a child. It just said, you want child? You want car? Deliver. What do you want? What do you want? Deliver. Deliver. What do you want? Deliver. The Bible says, delivered her. So you must understand what is in Isaac. That's why he comes out laughing. He can't expect. The day is born. The Bible says, he shall be called Isaac. For he laughs. His story is laughter. I realize it is possible to laugh until you go to heaven. Can it is possible? If Isaac laughed, so I used to ask myself, why Isaac? 
Because his conception is explained. He was just delivered by the word. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. He was just delivered by the word. So, there, even when Sarah is like, ah, she's laughing, how can I have a child? Isaac is the one inside. Because there's no way she can even doubt. Because, eh, the Bible says, by faith, she received strength to conceive seed. And that seed delivered her a child. Abraham says, what will you give me? I am childless. I have no seed. You give me a seed. Send your word. You remember the healing chronicles when I was talking about the sent word and they brought a, 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 a paralyzed fellow and he just walked out. Oh, like, we didn't even pray for him. He just walked up. We didn't even say, God, no, no, no. He entered where the word was and his body, his body said, the one go it stood up and moved. Because that's who we are. Your problem is not what you think is the problem. No, even though there are people here, you feel like you are in a certain box like this. You're stuck on every side. And I came to tell you, your problem is not that box. Your problem is you need seed. I came to give you seed today. The Bible says he giveth seed to the sower. When seed comes to the sower, what happens? The sower gets bread and he eats. You can't eat before the seed. You can't eat before the seed. But it has to be sown. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about the word. Now let's go deeper. Are we ready? If Galatians chapter 3 verses 13 If you're there you say Amina. Yep, Galatians chapter 3 verses 13. Are we there? Let's read. Mm -hmm. Christ has redeemed us. Hey, hey, read. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. What did Christ do? To become what? To become a curse, right? And what happens? He has what? Redeemed us from the what? The curse of the what? Of the law. Is that true? Next verse. The next verse says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Wait a minute. So, what is the seed? He tells Abraham, and God gave Abraham, and he promised Abraham, and the Bible says he spoke of seed, not as of seeds many, but as of seed, one seed, which is what? Which is Christ. He says now to Abraham and his seed, hey, 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 were the promises made. God didn't promise anybody outside that equation. He promised Abraham and his seed. Two people. Two. I don't have a seed. God promised him and his seed. And the Bible says, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He says, not unto seeds, plural, as of many, but as of one unto thy seed, which is Christ. Let us first go back where we were. We are coming back now. I think you've understood. I didn't want to leave you. Let's continue. The blessing, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus. Through who? Who is what? The seed, okay? And the Bible says that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Next verse. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth. Or what? Give me the Amplified of that. I want you to read it in the Amplified. The Amplified says, to speak in terms of human relations, brethren. Listen. If a man makes a last will and testament, a merely human covenant, no one sets it aside or makes it void or adds to it when once it has been drawn up and signed, ratified or confirmed. Now, when God says, I've made, when a man, a natural man makes a covenant, you can't change it. If he makes a testament, if he writes a will, that's it. Now, what about God? When he said, I've blessed Abraham and his seed, Jesus, that's it. 
Now, listen to the mystery. Next verse. Now, the promises, that is covenant agreements, were decreed and made to Abraham and his seed. Are you hearing? His offspring, his heir. He, God, does not say unto seeds, descendants, heirs, as if referring to many persons, but unto your seed, that is, your descendant, your heir, obviously referring to one individual who is none other than Jesus the Messiah. Do we agree? Now, next verse. Listen. This is my argument. Paul is arguing now. The law which began 430 years after the covenant. Now we are going to establish that. Concerning the coming of the Messiah. Listen. Does not and cannot annul or remove the covenant previously established ratified by God so as to abolish the promise and make it useless. Now let's understand this. The law came 430. Let's go back to mathematics. Genesis. You remember? You remember? The Bible says that Ishmael, the Bible says, generous to bondage because he represents them which are of Sinai. You understand? An Ishmael of freedom, right? Now, you realize when Abraham was 86, he produced something and God refused to agree with it. God came back at 99 and told the man, the real thing is coming, which is Isaac. 86 years, 99. What is 99 minus 86? Which is what? 13. You understand? And number 13 is the number of promise. That was representing the fulfillment of the promise God made to Abraham. The true promise, which is of God, orchestrated by God without human effort to fulfill it. Are you hearing me? That is 13. That is why even the devil knows the issue with that promise. He knows it. That's why you realize even the people in the world, you find many hotels and they don't have the 13th floor. They don't have the 13th room. They know that that is a shortcut in that dimension. That's why when it becomes Friday the 13th, it becomes a prayer. Oh, it's evil. No, they know. That, for me, that's one of my best days. Because it reminds me of the promise. So, we don't have number 13. They know why. Number 13 is not an evil number. No. It's a number the devil wants to paint evil because it reminds him of what can't be removed. What can't be announced. What can't be changed. What can't leave. Now, Jesus ultimately becomes the figure and representation of the fulfillment of the promise because he becomes the promise. Isn't it? And how long does he live in the world? 33 years. So, what is 33 times 13? 429 the covenant was sealed. He said it's finished. Do you understand? 13 times 33 is 400 and what? Do your calculator. So when Jesus says it is finished, he says now the law can come. So the law, he says, the law coming, let's go back now to the scripture. He says, this is my argument. The law which began 430 years after the covenant made on 429. He says, concerning the coming of the Messiah, does not and cannot annul the covenant previously established, ratified by God, so as to abolish the promise and make it void. That means the law is too late. To stop you. You see, so, when they say that before the law, no flesh shall be justified. Hmm? That scripture is too late for the Christian. Because God sealed your story before the law. Now, there is nothing in the law that can hold back the covenant he made through Christ. 
I don't know if you understand what I mean. What I mean to say, it's very hard, but it's true. There is nothing you can do to take away the blessing on you. If that means he's telling us we can do anything. No. To the pure, all things are pure. But to the unbelieving like you and the undefiled, nothing is pure. Because every time you speak good news, men think it's a license. And sometimes I'm torn between explaining that it's not a license to do what you want, but then I remember that the men I'm dealing with are pure. So why do I waste my time on an impure fellow? His problem is not what I've said. His problem is impurity. And the only way he can become pure is through the word. For I have purified them through your truth. You continue teaching. They will understand it one day. Now, Pastor Nixon. This man said it is finished. When it clocked 429, he said, it's done. Now the locking. Hey, hey, hey. Name that God has already fixed. Hey. So he said, it can't. It can't change. The law can't change what God established. It can't make void and disannul the promise. He didn't say the promises. The promise. Which promise? Which he made to Abraham and Jesus. Now, this was the mystery. Which was he from the ages past. The man God promised Jesus in you. The hope of glory. How can you not conceive? How can the law refuse you to conceive? It cannot. Because it's too late to refuse you. If it came earlier, that's different. It came later. So Paul said no. There is nothing the law can do. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to tell you. There is no law in this world. Let me say it this way. There is no law in this world that can stand in your blessing. Not even gravity. There is no law in this world that can stand on your blessing. No man in this world can stand on your blessing. No man in this world can frustrate your blessing. Nothing in this world can stand on your blessing. Nothing. But I've heard fellow Christians say, the devil to restore your blessing. You see, the other day, let me also bring an argument. A, a, a preacher one time said, I will don't mention names because we move in love. He said, the devil can steal your anointing. You are asking how, but some people believe it. So I ask myself, how can the devil handle what is of God and steal it and take it to hell? Some people think the anointing is like a, a monitor. This is what destroys the yoke. You can't, you, they can't steal your anointing. Somebody say, there are people here. The devil took your blessing. Whoa, way, whoa, way. Listen. My blessing has fire on it. No devil can hold it. It's too hot. It's too hot. Too hot. Too. See, do you know that your ultimate blessing is the Christ? Can they steal Christ from you? The Lord, the Bible says, is my portion. And he maintains my Lord. Let me say it in Luganda. But maybe he refused the man. And then another woman married him. Wow! That wasn't your man. They can't marry your man. Listen, Jennifer. They can't marry your man. Eh? But your wife. You're, then then we'll smile somebody, another man took. That's why you can't know this truth, and your wife cheats on you. A 
as she's going there, God just maintains your load. He's cheating. He's cheating. Come on, darling. He can't cheat. He, listen, even when you're talking, say, mine can't cheat. He doesn't cheat. I refuse to think that he can cheat. God maintains my Lord. He's your Lord. The Bible says, look in the scriptures. For none shall lack her. He didn't say a mate. Uh-uh. He didn't say a mate. He said her mate. Oh, whoa. <laughs> the Bible says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it has commanded, his spirit has gathered them. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Settle it in your heart. Your husband is still there. The one who you think is married and was supposed to be yours, ah, he's not yours. Leave other people's husbands and wives. That's why God hates divorce. Because he's thinking, you're imagining that she can't be yours. Let me leave that subject. I'm a, ah. Because how can you imagine she's not yours when you say that I do? How are you laid there? Maybe I made a mistake. Wah! In the maintaining of your lot, you would have gotten also in the middle and said, this is not your lot. <laughs> Somebody say Fire. He can't change it. What does Colossians 2 6 say? Colossians 2 6. Let me, let's read it from the, perhaps, uh, I would prefer to read it in the message. Oh, ye man, de cosete le pa. It is working in my life. Oh, I'm conceiving seed every day. That is why me, I told people, listen, even God knows it. Sometimes I'm in my bed and I read a seed. And I find myself doing, oh, oh my second conception. <laughs> Listen, the other day I was reading a scripture, I read every day. And it says, and everything that is known of God is manifest in them. I what do I know God of? God is rich, it is manifest in Apostle Grace. God is wise, it is manifest in Apostle Grace. God is strong, it is manifest in Apostle Grace. God, whatever you know God of. I said, ah! I couldn't stop shouting. What? Everything you know of God is showing out in you. And this is in the Bible. I said, God. What do you know God of? Is he a healer? You manifest healing. You don't believe God for healing. (laughs) Is he rich? You manifest money. (laughs) Are you hearing me? Does he have results? You manifest results. Listen, we have results. May I tell people, if you sit in Fanero for three months and your life doesn't change, it doesn't change. It's impossible. No. Why? Because I'm, I conceived. You understand what I'm telling you? I know how to conceive. The only challenge with Christians is they don't. You know, one time a pastor told me, How do you see those? Where do you get those people from? And then I told the pastor, I just did like this. I wish he understood it. That's why Jesus didn't say out of your eyes. He said out of your belly. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. Let's read Colossians 2, verse 6. Give me the message version. Now, listen. Paul says, my counsel for you is what? 
and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. Hey, hey, what were you given? Seed. Who is the seed? He said, just go ahead with what you've been. You received Christ Jesus, the Messiah, Master. Now, hey, now, leave him. I love this guy. Leave Christ. Don't live like him. Don't imitate. Listen. Leave him. So when Paul says, for me to live is Christ. Some people think he said, for me to live is for Christ. For me to live. Oh, ignorance. Listen. Let's go back. Oh, oh, oh. Auntie, I'm conceiving now. Oh. Listen. Next verse. You're deeply rooted in Him. You're well constructed upon Him. You know your way around the faith. But I don't know. God said you know. But I don't know. God said you know. But I don't know. Who is the liar? Let God be true. And every man a liar. He said you know. I don't know how to open blind eyes. You know. I don't know how to set my marriage. You know. Leave him. And say. Now. Do what you've been. School's out. Quit studying the subject. Start living it. And let your living spill over. Be careful with the man who you find praying and he's saying like this. Be careful with the man who you find praying and he's saying these words. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what he's doing? He has stopped school. All things in Christ are here. And amen. Hallelujah. When I think of Fanero chapter 3, I don't ask. I thank God. When I think of my marriage, I don't pray that she's a good woman. No. I thank. When I think of my children, I don't pray they are clever. Oh, I'm living that life. When I think of my next deal that I'm going to crack, I look back and say thank you. Because everything in Christ is here. It even becomes it even comes before you ask. Father, you want yeah. yeah. But God will yeah. I yeah. He says, before you ask, I will answer. I'm serious. What does the next verse say? Let's go back to Colossians. Watch out for people. Who try to dazzle you with big words? An intellectual double talk. Listen to what they want to do to you. They want to drag you off into the endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in him. Are you of God? Yes. Are you of God? Yes. The Bible says that if a man is born again, he's a new creation. For behold, the old is past, and now the new. And he says, and all things are of God, who has reconciled us back to himself by Jesus, and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Now let's go back to Colossians. Are you of God? He says, everything, put yourself in, of God, Gets expressed in him. So you can see and hear him clearly. Understand that. Understand that. Understand that. Are you among those that are of God? That means that you are expressed in him so that men can see him and hear him. So men hear God and see God through Apostle Grace. Put your name. If you see me, 
You have seen the father. You're, you're about to scream. Don't worry. <laughs> Not yet. You don't need a what? Oh, a what? Oh, a what? To realize the what? The fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without Him. Next verse. When, listen, when you come to Him, that fullness comes together. Fo, 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 The fullness of God is for me. To live full. I'm come that you might have life. I want you to be so full. God's will is simple. Hey. That's why the scripture talks about the richest measure of his anointing. Some people think eh, we have parts. Until they understand it's very possible to have the fullest measure of the anointing of Jesus, of God. God doesn't want you to have half the anointing. No. God doesn't want you to have three quarters. I wish you gave me that scripture. Let's read. Uh-huh. That you may really come. Uh-huh. No, begin from verse 18. Uh-huh. That you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints. God's devoted people. The experience of that love. What is the breadth and the length and the depth of it. Uh-uh. No, no. Begin from before. Before. I think there's some we've missed. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, 17, 17. Let's read. May Christ, through your faith, settle, actually dwell, settle down and abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. Next verse. Uh-huh. That you may what? Have the power and be strong to what? To apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. What is the breadth and length and height and depth of that love that you may really come to know practically uh uh-huh, through experience for yourself, 2016. Experience for yourself the love of God which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled through all your being and to all the fullness of God. May you have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body holy, filled, flooded with cancer, with HIV. How can they say you have HIV? When you're flooded with God. Can God have a child? I cannot have a child. I don't get it. Can God have cancer? Can he have arthritis? I don't have cancer. I can't get cancer. Why? Because my body is flooded. I carry the richest measure of his presence. I saw days where men are going to pass through streets. And all those streets are going to get slayed. And shops are going to close. Because they carry the fullest measure of the presence of God. Diseases will leave when they start to talk. When they walk past cancers, tumors will disappear. Hospital visits will become hospital walkthroughs. A man will walk into a cancer ward. By the time he's out, everybody is jumping. I believe. Let's finish Colossians. And he says, when you come to him, that fullness comes together for you too. His power extends over your house, your children, your ministry, your job, your body, your funny husband, your funny wife, your funny sisters, everything around you starts to get it. You sit in the car and your car starts to say, River car, blah, blah, blah. That anointing and presence starts to shed on everything around you. That means even the chairs in your presence feel the anointing. Your clothes feel the anointing. Everything around you 
starts to feel the anointing. Anything that touches you feels the anointing. When you enter a room, they feel that you've come. You enter a room where a man is dying and he sees you and he gets life. Why? Because you move with the fullest of the richest measure of the presence of God. That fullness extends to you when you come to him. May everything that touches you start to receive power extended from your spirit. Everything around you. Everything around you. Even the wristwatch you have. The Bible says, and how God wrought special miracles by Paul. That even handkerchiefs that touched him, touching the sick, and them which were palsy, and demon possessed. The Bible says the demons left them. Why? Because everything you touch has an extension of the power of God working inside you. What a life. What a life. You sit in a taxi and that taxi changes. You sit in a plane and that plane changes. You get into a university and that university changes. You step on the streets and they change. Something about you. Something about you. When you enter somewhere, they will know you've come. Not because you're announced. They'll feel when you're in a nation. They'll feel when you're out of a nation. They'll feel when you're in a city. They'll feel when you're out of a city. Why? Because the power of God extends on everything around you. And what does the next verse say? Entering into this fullness is not something you figure out or achieve. It's not a matter of being circumcised or keeping a long list of laws. No. You're already in. You're already in. He said, you're inside us. You're not through some secretive initiation rate, but rather through what Christ has already gone through for you. Destroying the power of sin. You're in it. And it says, and next verse, it is an initiation, if it is an initiation right ritual, you're after. You've already been through it by submitting to baptism. God under the water was a barrier of your old life. Coming out of it and was a resurrection. God raising you from the dead as he did Christ. When you were stuck in your old sin dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive through right along with Christ. Think of it. All sins forgiven. The slave wiped clean. That old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. So don't put up with anyone pressuring you in details of that, worship services, holy days. All those things are mere shadows cast before what was to come. The substance is Jesus. And you have him. Just leave him. It is finished. The devil is too late for you to fail. Okay, did I say that? Yes. The devil is too late for me to fail. It was finished. Why don't you just raise your hands and speak to Jesus? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You're in. You're in. You're walking in life eternal. You're walking in peace that passes all understanding. It guards your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. You're walking in prosperity. You're walking in divine health. Your children are blessed. Your going in is blessed. Your going out is blessed. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Your life is fixed. It is a wonder. It is a story. It is a testimony. It is a life. 
Listen. You are not believing God for anything. He has not provided. He has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Walk in it. Speak to Jesus. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Take a minute and just thank God. Talk to Him. See everything you've been believing Him for. Available now. Leave Christ. He says the sick came to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and enjoy it. Have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Your jobs overflow. Your ministry overflows. Your children overflow. Your body overflows in divine health. Your ministry overflows. Are you seeing it? Thanks. Thanks. I give you thanks for all you love. I am so blessed. My soul is unraised. Are you seeing what you're thanking him for? Lord, I thank you. Your marriage. Your job. Your ministry. Your family. Your children. Your future. But you have Jesus. You may feel like you are alone in this world. But you have Jesus. If you're here and you don't have seed. And you don't have Jesus in your heart. I beseech you by the masters of God. To straighten up your hand and say I'm ready to take seed. I'm ready to accept Jesus. If you want to be born again. Put up your hand and say I want to be born again today. 
Put up your hand and say, I want Jesus today. Put up your hand and say, I want to be born again today. God bless you. If you put up your hand, I want you to repeat this out after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you died and rose again. That you're the Savior. And today, I accept you and confess you as Lord of my life. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Venero, make manifest.